Hi guys, welcome back to shop. Hey, today I'm going to get on the. Uh, I'm going to start the gauges for the uh, uh, AT1 to CT1. Uh, I've just I've got to go into them, clean them up on the inside, put new faces on them, and uh, it's it's not a it's not a uh, easy or fast job. It's something that takes quite a while, so it'll probably be broke down into at least two, maybe three videos. So let's uh, let's get you overhead here, and we'll get started on this thing. All right, these are the ones I'm going to redo. I think uh, before I get going, I just want to check to make sure that everything works. So I've got a I've got a broken off uh, tack or speedo cable here, and these turn in reverse. Yeah, that, that one's working good. I just dwelled there a little bit to make sure all my numbers were turning, and they do. So uh, that's a good candidate, too. I'm sure there's people that can fix all the internal workings of these. And, you know, sometimes I'm lucky and can do it, but uh, for the most part, I just want to make sure that I have good ones that work before I take them apart. And I'm going to start with the tack, and I, I had told you that I had uh, this light, uh, and this one's not good either, uh, but... I was thinking about taking them out and painting them, but I actually I found some out of this, uh, I think this is a 78, and you can see the the needle was broke off, and this piece here was all busted out of the back. Uh, and, you know, I'm not into fixing these, and I just uh, was able to pop those out, and they look to be the same size as these, and they just glue in, so that's what I'm going to do, I think, for this, for this time anyway. Uh, uh, Dean at uh, Retro Mechanica, he sent me a link for some uh, translucent paint for these. And I'm probably going to go ahead and get some because this isn't the first time that this has come up. Uh, and I just really, I've never really run onto any kind of paint that you could, you know, really use. It's got to be something that's clear and translucent so that. Your, the light can shine through it. Otherwise, if you just put uh, spray paint on it or something like that, I, I think it would pretty much, uh, I don't know, pretty much block the light, especially since these bulbs are only like three watts anyway. Anyhow, uh, we're going to get started on this one, and it's quite an ordeal, but I'll try to go through most of it so you can see how it's done. Now the first thing we've got to do is just take the the damper off the top here. That's pretty much it. And the procedure on these is to you've got to uncrimp this faceplate off of here. And before you do that, before you start on it, it's it's pretty tough to get it to to start pulling up. Now I've, I haven't done a lot of these. Uh, I think I've done four sets and you know if you I try not to do any that I have to have re-chromed or anything like that. See your your chrome if you've got something like that usually some 4 aught steel wool will take care of most of that. You just have to work at it. Um, but you can, you know, this thing is not concourse or anything like that, so you, you can, uh, you don't need it perfect, or I don't anyway. Uh, so that kind of stuff, I just look to make sure that I don't have a bent up can, and I want pretty good glass because I don't want to have to replace that. You can get this, 
uh, from what I understand, but so far I've never had to do it. You just go ahead and uh, clean it good on the inside before you put it back together. And now this will be the first time that I've replaced the faces. So, you know, I, I don't really know what to expect. I just, uh, you know, I, I see people do it and it looks good, but I'm sure it's not easy. So this will be my first try on that. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna take you along on the ride. But the first thing you wanna do before you start trying to pry this up is get you some, this is just a cardboard, thin cardboard from a beer carton. And you want to tape this around there because you're going to be kind of prying against the, the case. And of course you don't want to dent it. And uh, actually I'm going to cut that a little bit narrower I think so I can get more tape to stick and hold it down. I'm sure there's people that do these all the time that are going to think my unorthodox way of doing this is <laughs> not the best. I don't do it all the time. Like I say, I've only done it a couple times anyway, so it's... Uh, so far I've never broke anything. But like I say, it's net, it's not easy, and it's uh, pretty tedious work, and I don't know what to expect on this changing the faces out. So we'll just see. I'm gonna put a little more down here, the tape right around the where I'm gonna be prying. Just to give it a little more padding. going to get in here and you just kind of start working that thing around. It's the toughest part's kind of getting it started but and instead of trying to lift all this up on one trip it's best I found anyway to make several trips around. Uh, change into a different screwdriver. I think one that's a little bit more gentle. But you can see what's got to be done. And it's going to take a while. Okay, I've gone all the way around once and now I'm trying a little bit different deal to to try to get it a little further out. It's just what works best for you. And the good thing about this is when you're done and you put it back on, even it, though it may not be perfect, this covers up everything you're doing here. So, you know, it's, it's just part of the process. And, you know, if you, if you don't like doing it or don't like that, be, being like that, then you're probably just going to have to buy a new one or an NOS one. If it were easy, everyone would do it, right? Okay, finally got there. takes a myriad of screwdrivers you just kind of start with one whatever one will start pulling it up 
and then you keep going up in bigger sizes and you just keep going around and around and around until you get it big enough to come off. And a lot of what I was seeing in the glass is uh, on the inside. So I think that'll be easily repaired. Clean, that is. And looks like we did okay. I don't see any damage there that we did. But if we hadn't have had that on there, you can see where I was going around hitting, you know, kind of twisting into it, that would have gone through. So you, you've got to take the time to make sure everything's in good shape before you, you do something like that. All right, the next thing we do is just take these two screws out the back. Okay, I had some pieces here from the from the boot on this other side. Looks like they're all crispy. So I'm going to have to figure out some way to to uh, redo those. And oops, okay, that piece comes off. And I just set this up in here and just get you some aluminum or something here to set up on both sides. Get under both sides of it. Pop your needle up. And then we've got a couple little screws here holding the face down. Everything's little. I know there's people out there that do this for a living and they probably are just screaming at me right now. All right, so there we've got it down to the, to the bare bones. This piece is just glued onto the bottom. It'll have to be re-glued. Just an extra support of some sort, I guess. All right. I think I'm just gonna leave that in here for right now. Keep it safe. And this one here is loose. I'll take care not to break it if I can help it. I don't know what I'm gonna do for a replacement. You can kind of see that these are offset. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll have to make something, I'm sure. That's the way with most of this stuff is you just have to adapt and overcome. You know, I think that's a Marine Corps thing. But I don't think it's too far off on old motorcycles either. And just generally in life. All right, there we go. Get that one off. And I marked this one as the green one over here. And... I don't know whether to take this old one off. I don't know whether that's possible. And uh, put the new one on. 
need to look at it a little bit here and just see. I'm not so sure I've got the right ones here. I think this is bigger. Yep, that's bigger. Let me, I think I've got a whole bunch of them. Let me look here. No, I guess this is right. They're, they're a little bit bigger, but all the lines line up. So you, that's just you, something you cut off afterwards. Uh, the, the major issue here is to make sure, see we're building a 175. Um, so this, we want an 8,000 RPM uh, red line, and on the AT1, the 125, you would be 8,500. So you want to make sure you've got the right one of those. And of course, these are 69 to 71, so they're the the black backing. Uh, the later model ones, uh, this is 72, 73. It's kind of a greenish, blackish backing. And these are actually for uh, RT, RT2 or 3. So I got the right ones there. It's just that you're going to trim a little bit of it off. Okay, I've kind of got this where I want it, I think. Uh, not all of these have to be trimmed like this. I've seen some of them that come cut the way they exactly fit the the plate but these need to be trimmed and you can see you see the the nippon sika japan there see it's under here too and that's that's going to sit right here at the bottom pretty close to where it was you know you're never going to get this perfect but uh, you want to get it as best as, that you can and I think I've got it pretty well centered. And what I want to do next is, is trim the outside. And of course this is a decal and I believe that this is all painted on. It's probably screen, sc screen painted I think they call it. Uh, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this paint off. But, like I say, the first thing I want to do is get this trimmed pretty close to where I want it. And I think kind of marked at the top at least, just so that I, I know where it needs to line up on the back of this. I just kind of marked that. So... I think that's what I'm going to do first. Since I've got this the way I want it, I'm just going to peel this back. Just give it a little mark right there so that I, I know where the, the five, five and a half mark is. And you know, I, I guess I'll just go, I'll trim from there. And I, I want to leave a little tab, and it doesn't matter where, just somewhere where you can get a hold of it to start peeling that, that back if you need, when you need to. Uh, but I think what I'll do is just give it a little start with my scissors. And then I'm going to go back there with a, a nice sharp razor blade and push this way from behind so that I follow around here.
And if you've got a little overhang, I think you'll be able to, it probably really won't even matter because you won't see that far out. But that just follows, you know, I'm, I'm pushing against, you know, this way. Just delicately because you don't want to change anything. Now I'm going to have to move my my clothespin here up the other side of that. Oops, too far probably. And I'll just keep going around. I just continue to go around very slowly. The reason this kind of looks weird here, I've got longer um, red along here for the red line is I'm I'm using a 125 gauge but I'm making it fit a 175 so the red line is at 8 instead of 8500 so that's why that looks the way it does you can put any face on it you want if you if you happen to have a 175 gauge and you want a 125 you can do that too okay i'm going to stop there and leave myself a little little something to get a hold of there and I can trim that off afterwards but that should be that should be pretty close I think there okay and we've got this down here where it's supposed to be all right so my next a thing on the agenda and I've got that marked on the back I'm gonna make that a little bit darker mark for where that is gonna line up and the next thing I'm gonna do is is uh, I, I in the past I've been uh, sanding on a piece of glass and you can certainly do that and I would but uh, I've just purchased a small surface plate so I'm going to sand on it and try to get this all taken care of. It is kind of wobbly here in a couple places. It's almost like it's got some dents. Uh, I'm not sure what I can do about that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just lightly trying to work those out before I sand not hitting it very hard and got some over on this side it's feeling pretty good it's a lot better than it was I would recommend a body hammer I think that's if you've got anything that needs to be corrected, I think that's how you're going to have to do it. All right, I think I'm good there. So we'll see. Okay, this is my little surface plate that I, I bought. They're pretty reasonably priced, but they cost a lot to ship. I think I've got uh, about sixty dollars fifty something in uh, the surface plate and it cost about eighty dollars to ship it to me but it sure makes things a lot better for doing something like this because it's got some weight to it and it doesn't move around so you you know if you're wanting to do a, like a cylinder head or a cylinder or something you're not chasing it around it's just a lot, uh, a lot easier to take care of. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I've got some 400 grit sandpaper here. It looks like I'm gonna have to get some more soap and water. But I've got soap and water here in my, my uh, 
squeeze bottle and these things are kind of hard to get going at first anything flat like this once you wear down the the uh, surface a little bit it will work better see it's not going to take much it is painted on and I'll probably go to a finer grit pretty quick Well, that's just really hard to hold on to. There we go. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Okay. I've, I've gone to a 1500 grit. Makes it a little easier to slide around on there. And we're, we're getting there. I'm sure you don't have to get it all off there, but you want to make it a, as good a surface as you can. Yeah, looking pretty good. You can see some little pock marks here probably. I'm not sure what that was from. Maybe I had something under my two pieces of aluminum or something when I was prying the needle off. You know, it's not going to be perfect. We'll just try to get it the best we can. I imagine 1000 grit would probably be good. This is just what I had. I think that's probably about as good as we're going to get and I don't want to lose my mark right there. And uh, kind of our next step is a little isopropyl alcohol and this will be the final clean. Of our plate and we'll let that dry. All right, we're kind of at that point, and I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to take a little soap and water, and shoot the back of it with it too. I think I'm pretty well lined up with my just a little over. Lined right up with my mark, I think. And then I'm just from the inside out, I'm going to work that to get that water out of there. And use a microfiber towel so you don't scratch your 
your decal. You can kind of see the outlines of where we're going to have to cut. And if you really had a bubble in there, you could take your microfiber towel and your, your little plastic spatula here and move it out. But I think I'm looking like I'm almost, I got one right there, almost bubble free, which is hard to believe. Gonna go ahead and cut my little tail off. Right there. And I'm just gonna go around here and make sure the edge is really down good. So I'm just gonna let that dry a little while and then we'll go ahead and cut out. I think I'm happy with it so far. Okay, then just take a, uh, take your finger and you kind of poke around down there until you, you see that you've got a depression for the screw hole. We're going to cut that out. And we've got our center one that the hand comes through the pivot use the exacto knife I've got very small scalpel here just want to be careful Alright, you can see what I'm doing. No one left to do. kind of press down around the holes to make sure that the uh, adhesive is all stuck there. there. I think we're done with her. We're ready to put her back in. Looks a lot better than the old one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted back on there, I think. That's how it goes. You don't want to over tighten these. They're small, 
number one, you don't want to break them. And number two, if you tighten them very much, you'll twist the decal. And you don't want to do that. I'm actually going to back these out a little bit and put just a drop of blue Loctite on them. Let's see. Got some right here. Just so you don't have to over tighten them to hold them down. And I mean, it's just going to be just a little bit. I think I'll actually just drop a little right over here on my counter so I can just stick a little bit of it in there and then I'm going to wipe that off. Just a little. Okay, then I'll do the other one. Okay, I just covered up the tip here and shot it real quick with a little black paint. And once that's dry, then we'll take care of the tip. All right, let's see if we can get some color on the end of the hand here. I've just got this that I, you know, it's probably not quite the right color, but it's what I use on cars, and it's actually made for speedometers, on Fords anyway. that dry and put another coat on. All right, we got our lenses glued in and I just used a little super glue first and then uh, put a little epoxy behind it uh, and I just used uh, JB Weld Clear Weld. It's a two-part and that's just to kind of beef up the, the situation on the back there to keep them from falling out. So we're kind of up to getting the uh, hand back on. And let me just stick this back in here. And we've got this painted up. And you just put it back to where it you know, to, to like zero. And it does kind of want to move. Okay, I think that's it. Well, it is off a little bit. I don't want to get back down there and... Well, I need to though. I think I'll use... Tongue compressor, maybe. Let me get that pulled back up and 
try to get it moved over. All right, we got that straightened up. Now, uh, something I need to address, and I think I found a, a solution for it, is this. This was uh, one of the uh, little tubes that go over the uh, lights there, and it was just in pieces when it came out. And what I think I found here is just some of the uh, sleeving. And the other one seems to be okay and pliable. And we just need to make sure that we can get them, uh, get it over both of them. And I think we can. I've just got to come up with a, uh, I've got to trim this one. And I had to kind of stretch it to get it over that first part or over the tube in the housing there. So what I'm going to do is trim this a little bit and see if because I can, I can kind of push down on it and uh, push it down further on the tube. Let's just see what that looks like. Yep, I think that's looks like it's gonna gonna work okay. But I think I need to trim a little bit more of it off. Try to get it more down to the same level as this one. So we'll give it another little trim. I can push it down a little bit, but I had to stretch it to get it to go over this tube to start with. So that's at about the same level, so hopefully that will be what we need. I've got a little, got that little piece to go back on the end of it here and I still think I need to to push it down or trim it or something. I think that might do it right there. Because I've got to get, it needs to set all the way down. I think that'll do it. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, let me get this kind of lined out and get this piece here glued back to the back of it. And I just, I think I'm just going to use a little super glue on it back here. It wasn't a very substantial thing. It didn't look like to start with. And it's, you know, once, once it goes into housing and the screws are in, it can't move anyway. So we'll just kind of wiggle that around a little bit. And let's give that a minute to, to dry. All right, I think we've got that. Got everything set. So we should be done in there, hopefully. And see if we can get the screws started. Okay, and I can just kind of need to poke that at one side. It's there, it goes. All right, so we've got the little diffusers or whatever they want to call them, we've got them attached, and everything is so the light can come through the hole. 
This one doesn't get any. It's, it's a backlight. So there we go. And the next thing we need to do is make sure that our, uh, our lens is clean. And I've been working on that. I think it's in pretty good shape. Uh, before I go to putting that together, I do want to check it to make sure it's working. All right, let's give it a spin here and make sure we're still working. Good. Okay, the gasket here is not in the best of shape, so I elected not to take it off of the lens and tried to clean it that way because it's, it's kind of cracked and I just don't want to aggravate things. So I think it's going to be all right. There's a few scratches on it, but uh, all in all, And what I did here was I went around the edge and tried to straighten that up a little bit better so it will go back on easier. And that should be right like that. And let me get set up and we're going to start uh, bradding that back together or bending it back together. Okay, I just put some tape on the front part where I'm going to squeeze against the front and we're just going to do this kind of a little at a time now I'm going to turn it around and about 180 degrees and try to crimp a little over here too Once it kind of starts folding over, it acts a little better. Okay, you can see where I'm going with it. Let's see, I've already wore through right here, so I need to get some more tape on. Looks like everything's okay on the other side. I'm just going to have to watch that tape. Okay, so you see where I'm going here? Let me get with it for a while. All right, I've got it all the way around. Now I'm just going, just like we took it off, you just do a little at a time. It just seems to work better that way. And then go around as many times as you need to to get that to crimp back down. So far we're okay on the top, but like I say, all this will be uh, covered with the damper. You know, just keep up with your tape. You don't need any on the back side here where you're actually doing the crimping. You just try to protect the front as much as you can. Quite possibly some 
something like Gorilla Tape or something, duct tape maybe, would be better. All right, replace that with a little duct tape. See if that lasts any longer. I'm sure you could make some kind of a little gizmo to, to do all this. But like I said, when you're when it's all said and done, the damper covers it up anyway. But yeah, this does last longer, but it's I'm still cutting through. So we'll just keep up with it. Several layers there. And then we'll just kind of clean up the, the chrome here. A little 4 aught steel wool. So there you have it guys, you know, you can get it as good as you want it and uh, like I say, once you put this on, you can't see any of it. So there you have it. Cleaned up the outside pretty good. Had one little owie there. There's no dent, just a kind of a scrape. And a little bit of the, uh, uh, let's, let's see here. And just use a little rubber. Now this is uh, natural shine protectorant for uh, vinyl and rubber and kind of brings the shine back out. Just, uh, I've got some smudges there that I can probably get off with some Windex yet. But that's a big improvement, I think you would uh, say. Now let me get my drill again and make sure we're still... I'm going to have to get you up here and get you out of my way. So we're good to go. And we've just got to go. This one here wasn't near as bad, but it's still, it's still going to get all the same treatment and uh, just be kind of a shame not to do it, I guess. We've got to get this piece out. Hopefully all this will cooperate and uh, not, not break anything. I think I've got a boot so we'll give, we'll put that back in if we can get it all apart without damaging anything. So there you go. It's not too bad a job. It just takes a little time. You just got to be uh, kind of, you just got to stay at it and uh, be methodical, I guess. So there you go.
Yeah, get rid of most of the smudges. Better. So there you have it, guys. Uh, tachometer refacing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the speedometer also. I probably won't show that whole thing because it's all identical here. I'll probably sh uh, show you how to run it back if maybe as far as the the miles on it and uh, you know it'll trim a little different because it's got the square holes but all in all it's it's the same process it's a little different because of the trip but you don't have all the lights to uh, uh, cut around just the uh, odometer and the trip so That'll be coming up, but probably won't show at all. So hey, thanks for going along on the ride, and we'll see you next video.